just getting started here. I am Travis, a.k.a. Mr. Panda. Um, we've got one minute till the countdown begins here. We are 9 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Lisbon for my man Igor here. And uh, yeah, Igor, welcome to the live stream, dude. Yeah, it's my first one. So uh, yeah, I'm excited for this. Take it easy on me. Yeah? <laughs> Definitely. I'm going to I'm going to stop sharing screen real quick cuz people don't need to see that. They just need to see us right now. Look at that. That's I did all. my hair and everything. Can you see that? That looks Wait. slick. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking good, dude. You're looking good. I like Look, I, took, I I used your wide shirt just like you said. I do like the panda costume to be fair. I do. Well, like yeah. It. And you you've got is this the same Hawaiian shirt as that's in your picture here? That's the one. Oh, wait. There we go. There we go. Look at that handsome face. No, look at look at that handsome face. Right hey, there. that was pre mustache Travis. That was pre mustache Travis. I'm trying to I'm trying to do it. <laughs> uh, welcome everybody. I am Travis, aka Mr. Panda. With me today, I've got Igor Borg Borges. 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 Close. Borges de Almeida. Yes, there you got go. it. All right, dude, I got half of it. AKA, it. it. AKA Mr. Surf Panda with me here today. Um, <laughs> we're excited to do a business proposal teardown for you. Have some fun. Igor is a customer success manager here at Panda Doc. And before that, he was an onboarding specialist. So think of today as me, uh, a new customer of Panda Doc in a red panda costume. Uh, and yes, I am wearing pants. It is a onesie, but I'm wearing <laughs> shoes. I'm in socks today, guys. So we're having fun. We're keeping it light. And we're going to dive into a proposal uh, template that one of our customers created and converted into a Panda Doc. And we're going to walk through how do you convert your existing proposals, your existing Word Docs into Panda Doc and make them look nice and make them ready for customers. Uh, Igor, are you ready to jump into this? Well, I'm ready. Let's do this, man. All right, cool. So the first thing that we want to talk about today is just that if you have existing documents, with your, if you're a running business, you probably got a PDF or you've got some sort of like Google Doc or you've got a uh, Microsoft Word Doc that you've been sending out as like your maybe statement of work, your your contract, your uh, proposal of sorts that you're sending out to people. But it's just not cutting it anymore. Maybe you need something that's a little bit more streamlined. Maybe you need something that's a little bit more customer friendly, um, something that's just more intuitive and gets the job done better. So let's start off with the very first thing. I'm going to share my screen here. You're going to see the PandaDoc application. Um, Igor, you can see my screen, correct? Yep. Yeah, All right, see cool. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is our uh, statement of work template that I've already uploaded into PandaDoc. But if you wanted to do that yourself, all you would have to do is basically from our home screen, add a document or add a template. You would select the file. As you can see, the different file types are here, PDF, Word, PowerPoint, JPEG, uh, PNG. So you can just upload that in, let it do its thing, and it'll populate. And it'll, I have done very little to this. I, I think I got rid of uh, just some highlighted stuff because there was a lot of highlighted things in here. And we'll, we'll see how I do that again. But You'll see the formatting is a little bit off. There's lots of spacing and just weird fonts going on. And it just, this doesn't look great. Yeah. And we're going to make cool. it look great. Look That's cool. our goal today. Yeah. And by the way, uh, Travis, go back to the uh, upload document for a second. Um, don't forget that you also have the template gallery. So we do have, wait, I said 500 professionally designed. It's not right. It's seven, 750, did you say? 750 professionally designed templates that customers can already use and make it their own. So yeah, that, I mean, there's all sorts of different templates here that they can use. Very good call out, Igor. And again, if today we're working on a statement of work, which is very similar to just like a business proposal, it has a lot of the same components like pricing table, executive summary, um, you know, fillable fields like e-signatures. But if you're, hey, like a new user and you're like, well, I don't work with a statement of work. That's okay. Like Igor said, we've got 750 plus templates. If you're very specific, you're like, I am a, um, a culinary chef and I am looking for a uh, proposal to send out for my catering business. Guess what? We've got a catering proposal. Got <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're five minutes into this thing. People want to see a teardown. Let's Good. get into it. All right. So I've got my document up here. 
This is what the Panadoc workplace looks like. And we're starting with a template. Now people are saying, well, Travis, Igor, we're sending out documents. The heck is a template? Why does it matter? And why are we starting with that? So Igor, can you help answer that question of like, why are templates important and what are they? Yeah, so imagine so just imagine templates as your generic master copies, right? Um, I like the analogy of saying templates are kind of like the parents, and then you're going to be creating documents from that template, right? So it's it's parent the template is the parent, the document is is their children essentially, right? So you're going to make this up your generic master copy, put in all the information, make it nice and neat for you and your team, and then you're going to be creating documents from these templates. And at the document level, that's where you're going to be putting in that final recipient information. Exactly. Templates save you time. If you're somebody that's sending out the same type of document over and over and over again, uh, you don't want to waste time trying to fill out all these fields, make sure every little detail's right. It's like, you want to make money. You got things to do. Let's get this out. It's one less thing on your plate. That's why we work with templates. So well said there. Now, this template's looking a little boring uh, in terms of how it gets started. It's not really attracting me as an end user or recipient of this uh, statement of work. Let's go ahead and talk about updating it with a cover page. Um, That's it. I'm going to go ahead and do all you saw me do here is just click the plus button. And then boom, you've got this bad boy at the very beginning of your document. If you click this view, you can see all your kind of pages at once. Right now it's really just two pages, but the second page is gigantic and super long. And we'll dive into that. But let's edit this bad boy. Igor, what do you think a cover page needs? Yeah, so I think when we, I mean, like it says there, you can start by clicking to upload an image there. So, I mean, it kind of just tells you what to do really, right? So it does actually help you build out this simple cover page which customers can use. So yeah, we'll start up by uploading a simple little image, Prestige Worldwide. There we go, love it. <laughs> and then yeah. you can go ahead and uh, yeah, add a document title as well, document subtitle too. So what we're gonna call it, statement of work there, right? Love it. Document subtitle, what we're gonna call it there, marketing as a service, perfect. And then what we can do is we can actually, it looks a little, what do you think? It looks a little blank to me on the background, right? It's a bit too white. And there's a lot of area here that's blank. So let's go ahead and maybe add a background image. What do you think? Let's do it. Let's do it. So let's go ahead and yeah, go to the cover page properties. Over on the right hand side, we've got the background image. Let's choose an image there. Let's select something here that's going to make it look snazzy. I like that word, snazzy. <laughs> very snazzy and you know what it looks a little i don't know it just looks a little heavy do you know what i mean like maybe we could change the opacity too all right let's change your opacity maybe to what 50 percent again right hand side let's see what it looks like at 50 percent. Oh, what do you think much better now you can see the text it's not as distracting you can still yeah. see our prestige worldwide shout out step brothers my favorite movie uh 2009 <laughs> i think that movie came out 2008 um but yeah this looks good so far uh, briefly, let's talk about roles and then let's talk about what the heck these highlighted things are. So we've got this manage button up here. Igor, what the heck are roles and why do we need to assign them? And, and yeah, give me a brief uh, understanding. Yeah, yeah. So roles essentially are going to be placeholders for your future recipients, right? So here, for example, you have your sender role, you've got your client role. Right. So you can even your, assign yourself a get to the actual sender role. If you're the person that's going to be sending out this document consistently, right, you can actually pre-assign yourself, which, again, is going to save you time when you're creating this template uh, and you're creating the document from this template. Um, so, yeah, so you can put in, you know, again, sender role, client role. Let's say, for example, you want to bring in maybe the finance team, right? You want to put the finance team into this document too. Go ahead and just create the finance role, add it. And if you click into the finance role itself, there you go. You can pre-assign a person or just a generic email, like a team, for example, right? So they're always going to be CC'd in this, in this template. And then again, when you're creating documents from this template, it's always going to be generic, always going to have that, that role, that, client, that, that, uh, that email, essentially. You can rename it as well. You can delete it. Exactly. And then you've got something that's called a set signing order. We might, just, If you want to talk about that right now. Let's do it. Um, yeah, let's just go back. So as you can see, the set signing order. So essentially, if you turn that on, it's going to essentially, you're going to, you're going to set an order in, you know, for each recipient to receive the, the, the document. So for example, 
um, you know, you can have yourself as a sender first and then the, 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 the client next. So for example, the sender is going to receive this, this document first, you're going to sign it. And then once you do sign it, that trick, that's going to trigger an action then for it to be sent to the client. So, the, so essentially the client will not receive this document until you do your part first. I think that's might, might be smart too. When you're sending out a, a statement of work, let's say you're a solopreneur and you're like, I want to get this done as quickly as possible. And when I see my client sign, you're going to get so excited and you're going to be like, yes, I'm ready to work on this thing with them. Like money in the bank, let's go. So I prefer to have the sender be the the signing order here where like I have to just go through and fill it out and fill out some of these fillable fields that we'll create at the end. Again, just to kind of like save a little bit of time. And then that way, when the client receives it, they'll see my signature at the bottom. They'll see all the the filled out fields and they'll be like, oh, shoot, this thing's ready to go. They're just waiting on me now to finish it. So I think that's a cool option here as well. That's and then it. briefly, another feature that might be cool that I've used myself is the suggest edits and resolve suggested edits. Can you just briefly explain what that is and why that might matter in a document like this? Yeah, so suggested edits, you can allow your recipients to essentially what, as it says, suggest edits to the actual document. So you can use Pandadoc natively, and I really do like that feature myself because it's everything literally within Pandadoc. You go ahead, you know, highlight words, delete words, everything else. And you as the sender, you're going to receive that notification because, you know, due to those edits, right? And then you can also have the use Microsoft Word, for example. So you can actually download this document as a Microsoft Word, make your redlining, make those suggested edits, right? And then re-upload the, 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 new, the new version copy. And then again, you as a sender, you're also going to receive those notifications in order to either reject those suggested edits or accept those suggested edits. Beautiful. All right, let's get back into tearing this thing apart. Let's do it. All right, we've got our cover page looking pretty good. We've got these highlighted fields here, and these are variables. And so I'm big on variables. Uh, the way I understand them, Igor, is it is a way to have repetitive content be accurate and be auto-populated for you throughout your document. So things like the person's name you're sending this to, the company they work for, the address or phone number, and maybe some of the billing information that gets repeated throughout uh, a document, maybe like a terms and conditions where it has it in there like dozens of times. And that way you don't have to have anything like a misspelling or you have to go back through it one at a time. Did I kind yeah. of cover that in a, in a nutshell? Am I missing anything there on what variables <laughs> are and how they're helpful? Yeah, no, yeah, that's it. No, you actually hit, you actually hit nailed on the head there. So essentially, yeah, again, Variables are your placeholders for dynamic information. So in this case, you know, you have um, sender roles, sender variables, client variables, and essentially like, for example, their name, their company, you know, address, phone number, all that good stuff. Um, if it's if, if you want to use that along the document, so let's say, for example, you have client company a dozen times along that document, go ahead at the template level, create those variables. When you create a document from this template, which we're going to see in a little bit, um, you know, those variables are automatically going to be populated with the with the with the client company, right? And so, again, like you said, it's going to reduce you time and it's going to reduce you error as well. You're not going to have any errors because you only have to do that once, and everything's going to be the same. So, John just asked a great question in the chat. Thanks, John. Uh, can I add variables into a Word doc and upload to Panda, or do they have to be added via the Panda doc interface? Igor, I'll let you handle that one. Maybe that has to do with the converting of, of uh, an existing PDF or Word doc? Yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a very good question. Now, you would have to do it natively within Panadoc. But the cool thing is, like, when you upload a PDF, um, you, you can't edit a PDF. You can edit over a PDF, right? However, a Word document, the cool thing about Word docs is you can use natively Panadoc to actually convert the document right then and there. But again, yes, you will still have to use Panadoc in order to... Um, you know, change out those variables. But the cool thing is you do this at the template level, you only have to do this once, right? And then that's it. So that's it's it. five minutes. That's yeah. it. <laughs> Today we're doing it in under 45 minutes. You do it once, you set it, you forget it, and you send your documents. It's like eating your vegetables. You know it's good for you. You don't want to do it. You're just <laughs> eager to send the document, but create the template first. You'll see us create the document from this template and send it immediately. You'll get to see what that's like. A shout out to Rui. Rui, thanks so much. I'm glad you're enjoying this uh, user testing and uh, that it's a, a fun way for you to learn about Pandadoc and how to use it. 
Um, all right, let's get back into this guy. Let's start editing our, our, our first page here. We've got our executive summary. Uh, we see that we've got uh, maybe some variables that are already in here that I've put mm -hmm. in here beforehand. Um, but this is just looking a little bit clunky. Like there's all this space here. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete some of this extra space. There's a lot of room for activities. Stephanie. There's so much room for activities. So much room for activities. <laughs> so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to delete it. And if you're like, oh, crap, I didn't want to delete that, you can always come back up here and hit the undo button or control or command Z, depending on if you're using a Mac or a PC. That's it. Let's go back to our content blocks. We're just going to add stuff in here. This is the top part. We'll get to fillable fields later. We're just going to add, boom, a new text field. And then we've got this second part. I'm going to cut this little part out of here. We're going to cut this back. So let's zoom out and just see what this looks like. Okay, so every good proposal starts with like a statement of work or excuse me, a, a executive summary of just ex like talking about who the company is, how you're going to you know help them. You can see Prestige Worldwide is a marketing as a service firm that delivers world-class marketing execution talent. Um, but I kind of want there to be a little bit of space in here. We've got this nice kind of white space. We've just got a lot of texture. It's it, it feeling a little overwhelmed. I think we add a page break. Boom. Page break. That's it. Page break. <laughs> page break. Um, I feel like I need to do like a page break dance. Like, oh, no, 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 page break, bro. All right. Um, let's take a look at our pages here. So now we've got the three separate pages. We're going to continue to do more page breaks here. Um, this looks okay. You know what? I want to edit this footer. I don't think we need to have... Yeah, I think there's a lot of information there. Just double click the footer, you know, delete any information that you need. It's going to clean you know, it up a little bit, one, two, right? Three, Brennan Avenue, uh, Suite One, Dale Dovac, Florida. Uh, good call out there of uh, Sports Step Brothers uh, Easter eggs here. I like that better. It's just a little bit cleaner here at the bottom. We've got mm -hmm. our services. And then this is like this table. Mm -hmm. I, like this. I like the table, but I think it deserves its own page. It's exactly. Just, Agreed. It's a big thing. And then I think we want to create another text block here. I had staffing. So this is that staffing section. There's like a little uh, emoji that maybe didn't, you know, convert over. That's okay. But really, I think this stuff is going to stay like pretty standard. I think this is a great opportunity for us to talk about content locking real quick because we're building a template that we want our team to use and mm -hmm. send out the statement of work to clients but maybe there's some portions of that, uh, that template that we don't want our reps messing with. So how do I lock this so that it doesn't get changed? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, so essentially, let's say, for example, that your team is gonna be sending out documents from this template, right? And obviously this table, you wanna make sure that the content is locked and you know they're not gonna change any information in it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and click in the, on the table in, into the table once, then you see that little hover menu on the top. You go to the property section on the right-hand side. There you go. And then on the right, you've got restrict editing. So you have two options here. You can restrict editing. So it restricts users from editing the content within this table. And then you've got another option, which you can lock the block into position. What that means is they're not going to be able to move this table up or down along the document. It's going to stay static. It's going to stay in this specific position as you see it. Beautiful. Well, let me go back because I'm noticing that there's some fonts that need to be, uh, let's see, we've got 14, Arial 15 and 16. My little eyeballs are like, wait a second, this looks off. So let's just make sure everything detail. is the same. I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's my marketing brain there. Um, <laughs> again, there's just so much going on here. I think we need to, and I think there might be, let's see, this is still something a little goofy about it. Essentially, we're changing, you're changing fonts here. You're changing font sizes. Yeah. Make While I'm doing cool. this, uh, there's everything that you would see in a word editor is up here in this top bar. You can um, do all sorts of things like strike through, superscripts. You can make sure your headings are all the same. Um, but let's go ahead and just make sure everything here is 16. That looks a little big. I'm going to go back to 15. Let's click and do that, yeah. Okay. Oh, it didn't want me yeah. to do that. Yeah. 
I think 15 looks good. Let me just make sure this one is. This is my OCD kicking in. Welcome to the show, everyone. Okay, there we go. All right. Let's move on to adding a page break here at the bottom. That's it. Yep. And clean it up a little bit. This guy needs to be its own text block. I'm going to do another page break. We're going to do another. You love text your page break. breaks. You do love your page breaks, don't you? I do, man. I want everything on its own page. I want it nice and clean. That's it. Um, I want when the customer looks at this that they're like, okay, we're moving on one kind of one thing at a time here. So I'm going a little bit fast, but I, I just want to pause for a second because we're coming up on a very important uh, piece to building a proposal inside of Panadoc, which is the pricing table. That's it. Yep. So Igor, what is a pricing table and why is it so amazing and helpful in a proposal builder or a document builder like like Pandadoc? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So actually, first of all, let's go ahead and actually delete that table there that you see roll and monthly fee before, before we get we get started on that. So let's go ahead and delete it. And then let's go and let's go and drag a pricing table from the content. There you go, on the right hand side. Boom! Boom. Look there at that thing. That was so much better than what was in there before. There you go. So, so just so you guys know, essentially a pricing table is where you're going to be able to put your products and services, right? And the cool thing is, Panadoc is also going to automatically ca calculate everything, whether it's pricing, subtotals, quantities, um, you know, taxes. If you're feeling generous, discounts, right, as well. Um, you'll notice that blue section there that you can actually data merge and import your products and services from a CRM, right? So if you have Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive, you name it, bring those products in, right? Make the integration, bring those products in from your CRM if need be. In this case, let's disable it, right? We're just going to keep everything within Pandadoc. But as you can see here, essentially what you can do is you can actually in, um, manually put in your products, right? So you can name it or you can actually bring in your products from our product catalog. So you can import all your products and services into the product catalog, as you can see there. And even, you see that little burger menu on the top left-hand side is three little lines. You can even categorize your products and services too, right? So yeah, let's, uh, let's, go, let's go ahead and actually add a few, a few products in here, or in this case, services. Catalina Wine Mixer, love it. It's going to be expensive. Fun fact, by the way, I was bitten by a horn shark just off the coast of Catalina. You were bit. Oh, gee, that it, was that a baby. Be it was a baby horn shark. It's actually a great story for when I go on dates. <laughs> Honestly, I could do not. I'm glad you're okay, and I'm glad that it was just a baby shark. It was a baby um, shark. Now I've got the baby shark song in my head. <laughs> <laughs> now, what if I want to add another? A product in here. Mm -hmm. Let's say DJ Brennan uh, is another product I want to add. Yeah. How do I do that? Yeah, yeah. So if you click out of the pricing table just once, and then if you click back into the Catalina Wine Mixer, so you see that little little drop down icon just there. Sell options. Click it there, and then you've got insert row below, and boom, you got another row. So you can add another new product. Boom. DJ Brennan, love it. Okay. That's going to be a thousand dollars if we want it. Now, one of the cool things that I put out in a lot of my silly videos on LinkedIn is the idea and the option to make these uh, an interactive pricing table. Tell me how to do that and and why is that important? Yeah, let's go ahead and click the sell options again. So that drop that little drop down menu next to DJ Brandon. So here you've got recipient options, right? So here you can enable optional items and quantity editing. So for example, if you want your clients to choose which one of the products or services they want, right? And as you can see, when you actually click into it, again, the pricing table does everything for you. It does the automatic calculations for you. And then the quantity as well. So you can change, you know, Two DJ Brennan's, for example, right? And again, it's all going to be calculated automatically. You know, you can go ahead and add a tax, for example, right? I mean, there's two two things in life, two certain things in life, which is death and taxes. So let's go ahead and add a tax there. And if you again, you're feeling generous, and I'm feeling generous today, maybe just add a little bit of a cheeky discount. Let's do uh, let's do a. Uh... 5% discount. 5% discount. And again, there you go. You got your subtotal, you got your 
full total, right? And as you can see, just an FYI, on the top left-hand side, you even have your total document value as well, which is going to show you in your dashboards, when you're at the document section. So yeah, some pretty cool stuff there. Um, all right, let's just address some of the questions in the chat I'm seeing in here. Uh, Rui, I apologize uh, that we are teammates here at Panadoc, and I flubbed on that. I'm nervous today. I'm excited. Um, of course, I know you're a, you're a Panadoc teammate. Hannah, can you add a smart content block into a table? I don't know the answer to that. Can you add I don't, a smart content no, block? No, I don't think you can add a smart content block into, into a table. But it is a good question. Smart content is a very useful tool. If you want to provide you know, useful content where you can create conditional rules for something like, let's say, for example, you have a terms and conditions for North America and terms and conditions for Europe. Right. You know, you can set up, you know, a conditional rule for if this contract is for a customer within Europe, then bring up the terms and conditions for Europe, because obviously we know the T's and C's can be different from across the pond. So, you know, little there's a little snippet there for you. <laughs> Thank you for explaining that, because I was like, uh oh, I'm in over my head. <laughs> sometimes, um, I, Yeah, sometimes I get even like, oh, what, wait, hold on. <laughs> it's a super robust feature and it's 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 awesome for larger teams. And Hannah, I think if you have a idea, problem, question, or praise, as you're seeing on the screen here, we're listening. And so if you're like, hey, Travis and uh, Igor, I would love the ability to uh, add a you know smart content block into a pricing table. Um, that might be something that we could look into. So anyway, a little quick diversion there. I'll get rid of that. Um, okay, maybe we need, to do a whole, we need to do a whole teardown on smart content now after that one, because I'm like, it's, it's a deep, deep topic here. Um, all right, we've got our pricing table, we've got our timeline in term, we've got our uh, variables here looking good. Hey, by the way, Travis, did you uh, did you manage to actually update the variables on the second page? Have a look at it quick. Let's do I'm it. not sure if we did. Go ahead up to the second page for me. I company missed name. it. There you go. Good call out. Just like so. You. On this right-hand little nav, we've got our content blocks, our manager of roles, and then we've got our content library and variables. You can see it's got little brackets here. So I'm looking to replace this one company name. So that's going to be the client company. That's it. Let's go ahead and, and copy the client company name. Hey, and by the way, just an FYI, check it. Check how you can see 22 next to client company. You know what that means? That actually means that variable comes up 22 times along this template. So again, that's 22 less things you actually need to do when you create a document. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Boom. Did we just become best friends? We did. <laughs> we just became best friends. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of the highlight on this guy. Again, we've got company name here. So I'll go ahead and paste company address. We'll do right here. And then I will make sure that it's also got the city right next to it. Nice one. It's got the client state and then the client country. Hey, do me a favor. Can you can you put spaces between those variables for me? Client address, client city, state, and everything else. There we go. Otherwise, everything's going to be everything's going to be together. It's going to look all goofy. Yeah. Nice. Beautiful. All right, good call out. Now we've got it when we populate it, it won't look uh, too weird in the document. Okay, we are zipping right along here. Let me just check the chat to see if there's anything else here. Um, I have already used Panadoc for 50 of my clients with Pipedrive, HubSpot, and other. Uh, Oxy, that's awesome. Our more advanced quote configuration features planned in Panadoc. We do have advanced quotes. Uh, if we want to go into doing another live stream on advanced quotes, we do. If you want to go beyond, Oxy, if you want to go beyond uh, pricing tables, we do have uh, advanced quotes as an option. And that is a really cool feature. Um, I'll see if somebody from my team can drop a link for you into the chat, Oxy, of uh, Panrock's advanced quotes. You'll see a video of me explaining the difference between pricing tables and advanced quotes. And, I, and also, I actually want to shout out my account manager, my colleague, Jim Petrola, because uh, he has a really cool analogy about uh, advanced quotes he always says it where essentially advanced quotes is kind of like a pricing table on steroids and i freaking love that when he says it so shout out to him <laughs> if you're here 
Love you, dude. <laughs> and then about five minutes ago, sorry, Matthew, I missed your question. Matthew Martin asked, if offering multiple services, do you have the flexibility to make one service required and the other optional add-ons? Yeah, so Matthew, that's a great thing to do here. So you'll see that in the pricing table for the Catalina Mind Mixer, I did not make this one optional. That is going to be in there as a standard part of this. And then the DJ Brennan is what the folks can you know, add in or, or, you know, remove the quantity and take it back down to one. So that's how, that's how I would do it. If I was sending this out and you were like, I want to make that there uh, shout out to Jim Petrola. He liked uh, the shout out that you gave him. So he's in the chat watching this, which is awesome. Yep. All right. <laughs> We've got about 15 minutes left in this live stream. I want to make sure we cover everything here. So one of the things that I'm noticing Igor is that there is a lot of just like terms and conditions at the bottom of this thing. Yeah. And it feels like a lot for my brain to look at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when maybe we want them in a different spot. Yeah, so what, a new, what do you think? Like adding a new document to this one? Do you know what I mean? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So this thing already has seven pages, right? This current statement of work. If I add a document and I just come down to here and hit blank, now at the bottom of those seven pages, I've got this whole new document yeah. and you can see I can add stuff from our content library if I want to. Um, but I'll just get started by adding a, a little text block to this. And let me grab this uh, terms and conditions, T's and C's, T's and C's, if you will, on the invoicing terms. I've got that there. Love it. And I'm going to add that to this text block here. Boom. There we go. Hey, we should, now we should probably change the uh, template name too, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's rename that. Let's rename that baby. Easy, please. Here we go. Now, again, it still just looks like a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that this is a little easier to read. Legal teams might appreciate that as they're trying to comb through this and perhaps do some redlining, yeah. which is a great opportunity for me to have you explain how do you do redlining? We touched on it briefly with suggested edits, but do you want to just say like uh, a little bit more about like you send this over to legal and they've got questions. Uh, how does uh, resolving suggested edits work in a situation like this? Yeah, so it's, it's going to allow, you know, the recipients to actually to resolve su those suggested edits sort of back and forth, right? So you don't have to necessarily do that. So, yeah, it could be it could be an easier way, you know, of collaboration. You also even have the chat function within the document, too. So you can sort of go back and forth, you know. And there's actually a new feature just come, that's coming out very, very, very soon. And we already have some some clients testing it out, which is called Rooms. And if you want to know about Rooms, maybe I would uh, ask your customer success manager or account manager. Just again, little snippets. Just giving you some little bite, little bite, <laughs> little bite, little teaser. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready to put out some fillable fields now that we've got our, our T's and C's separated into a different page. Let's go back to our our bulk statement of work here on this page. I want to again. It's time for another page break. All right. Um, fillable fields. Yeah. How should I go about making sure that this doesn't need to be a document that ever gets printed or faxed? God help you. Uh, scanned with a with a hand signature. We don't do that here at PandaDocs. So we say do I just black block we things say over or how it just delete it oh there we go just delete it so essentially fillable fields that you can see you know what travis is doing here basically fields are essentially a way to collect recipient information now notice what i said here recipient information meaning that you know it will be travis that needs to sign it as well it will be you know the finance team that maybe needs to sign it uh maybe brennan maybe he needs to sign this too right <laughs> um but yeah also you're going to put in uh, fields in order for the client to sign it too, right? So you've got your text fields, you've got your signature fields, your date fields. You've got a whole bunch of different fields that you can use, you know, radio button, check boxes, upload fields as well. So, you know, if your client needs to upload a specific document for you, right, everything can be done within the field section. So as you can see here, uh, what Travis is doing, he's, he's just putting in a bunch of fields. And also, um, Travis says also, uh, also before, well, when you uh, 
when you align everything, and as you can see, actually, Panadoc also aligns pretty much everything for you. It kind of helps you with that alignment, so it does save you a lot of time. Um, maybe add a little space there between the invoicing. There you go. Boop. Boop. All righty. So you see where it says enter value, right, on one of those on one of those text fields. So maybe go into the property section and actually change the placeholder. And instead of enter value, let's maybe put what? Enter name. Love it. Right. And then also you notice that the fields on the left hand side above client company, it actually is assigned to the sender. Click in that field. Let's assign it to the client, too. There we go. And there's another cool thing that I wanted to show you. You see where it says invoicing contact name and then invoicing contact email. Can you go into that field for me? Go into the property section. And if you look at the validation, let's validate that field into an email address. So now the client can only insert that email address there. They can't insert anything else. So again, it reduces error. Man, that is, uh, I didn't know you could do that. that Mind blown. Really freaking... <laughs> this is so sick. Okay. So we've got our fillable fields. We've got our terms and conditions here. I think we're ready to use this template. We've got about 10 minutes left. I wanna leave just a little bit of uh, time at the end for some, uh, some Q and A and I'll check in to see now, is there a way to insert a horizontal line instead of a page break? Cool. That's a good question. Good question. I mean, usually you, I, I actually would just use like the actual, you know, the line that you can use from your keyboard. Um, but no, I don't think so. But that is a good question. The, the only thing I could do, yeah, so Hannah Douglas, great question. What I would probably do in this situation is grab an image of a line that's on your, like that's with your, maybe your branded color and your branded font or whatever and thickness and just have that kind of be in your content library that you can add in. If you don't want to have page breaks, uh, I personally am a page break guy. Just I like things in chunks. That's the way my brain works. But I totally hear where you're coming from um, in terms of adding that horizontal line. I think there's that option in other tools. But yeah, maybe something to think about. But I would just drag in an image of a line yeah. or do it the Igor way and just literally go. <laughs> there you go. You know, just, like, just literally just whack in the line. That's me. Oh, baby, I just <laughs> did it like that, homie. Look at that. That's Whoa. It. <laughs> but that's actually that's one thing you touched up on earlier about the content library. So, guys, just imagine the content library as your virtual library where you can save all your assets, right? Whether it's terms and conditions, or in this case, yeah, your branded lines, and you can use that branded line along the along the document, along the template as well. So it's pretty cool. You can create your stuff in Canva and bring it immediately over with a Canva integration as well, which is pretty sweet. So if you're building your stuff and designing things in Canva. Um, you can bring it right on in, which is really sweet. As a marketer, I love that ability. Yep. All right. All right. So what do you think? Are we ready to use this template? Let's do it. Let's do All right. It. Let's do it. Okay. So let's change out the document name. What are we going to do? 2023 statement of work statement of work template. Yeah. Or maybe take out a template. I don't think we need template there. There we go. Yeah, for me. I'm sending it to, I'm sending it to you. Send it to me. All right, so we already got the senders. As you can see, you've already assigned yourself to that role, right? So that's one less thing you need to do. You have all your information there, right? So what we're going to do, Chief Dale, <laughs> Dale officer, <laughs> right, let's go ahead and add me. So the cool thing is, because you've already added me in a previous contract, right, all my information is going to be automatically saved in Pandadoc. So again, one less thing you need to worry about. Everything is already there. Go ahead and smash that continue button at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> all righty let's see all right. what happen let's see the magic happen so the one thing i want to shout out the variables look at the variables hey done it's done right everything is pretty much all set ready to go and by the way guys this is a document right this is a document. So now everything is pretty much ready to go. There's one, you know, again, you don't have to go and worry about editing all those variables, all those, you know, company information, all that good stuff. Everything's already there, done automatically, thanks to Pandadoc. I love it.
So right now it's in draft mode. I think I had approval as uh, as a setup for it. Um, I can go back actually and just take that out. Yeah, let's take, so, let's take it out. Let's go back to the template. I think it was this one. This one. Was it? Uh, was it that one? Nope. This one. I think it was a simple. Yeah, I think that. I think that was it. Was that it? Yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take out approval required. And by the way, actually, just so we can touch up on approval, right? Approval required means you can, it requires a document to be approved by, you know, in this case, when we say a recipient, it could be like by management or director. So you can set up the approval required. So the document stays internal in order for, you know, your manager, for example, to review it, approve it. Once they approve it, then you're able to send it out to your client. Right. But if they reject it, obviously it goes back to you. Then you have to make your changes, go back and forth. So that's it. And there it is. Beautiful. All right. Let's get ready to hit send and we can talk about some of the other uh, features in the, uh, the send. So you can send it as an email. You can get a uh, uh, send it as a link. Let's say you're, you're having your conversation in the LinkedIn DMs. Oftentimes that's what's happening with me. Uh, when I'm trying to sell something or I'm trying to bring somebody onto my podcast and I'm trying to send them a Panda doc so that they can sign away their rights to be on my show, I can send it to them via link. For this case, let's talk about it sending via email. Oh, you actually right. have two variables there. This is something really cool that PandaDoc has. So it's kind of like a safeguard for you. So if you yep. have variables that are missing information, PandaDoc is going to be like, hey, hold on a minute. Check it out. There's a couple of variables that are missing. So you just basically, you know, if let's say for custom variables, because that's another thing we didn't touch up on. You can add custom variables into your PandaDoc template. And then at the document level, PandaDoc is basically going to prompt you to fill out that variable. And if you can see on the right hand side, it highlights the variable that you need to that you need to uh, fill out. There you go. Kick off date. Sweet. Okay, now you can send it. I like that that happened because that was a good way to showcase of like, yeah. hey, we're going to make sure you yeah, don't. Yeah, that was actually random. I didn't even see that to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's go. Let's put in that optional message. And just so you know, right, there's one cool thing that Panadoc has as well. See where it says save messages? Exactly. Here you can insert all your email drafts. So if you have a big old email that you tend to use to your clients, Go ahead and save them into your settings section and you can just reuse them as many times as you want, right? And if you have more than one person on your team, everyone can have their own save message, you know, with their own name. So again, it's just one less thing that they need to do, right? Here we go. And also you have expiration settings at the bottom. You've got reminders, forwarding, signing orders, suggesting, suggested edits. So let's say, for example, Lau, I like to nag my clients. So if my clients don't sign my documents within like, let's say four or three days, you know, hit that reminders button. And then you can even send recurring reminders every week, every three days, up to you. It depends how much nagging you want to do in that, right? So, but I'm a nagger, I like, I like it, so. <laughs> there you go, apply that. And that's it. And then all you got to do is just send document. Voila. Dude, look at that. We created a template. We, we uploaded it from Word, we created a template, and we sent a document in under 45 minutes. Holy smokes. Love it. Love it. That was great. That was actually that was a lot of fun. We should do this more often. And now I can show people what it looks like for the recipient. So remember, in the sending order, I was the first person, even though I'm the sender, because that's the way I like to do it. Boom. So people can see, you can draw, type, upload. By the way, my uh, Travis, we can't see it. Oh, you can't see it? No, I can see the fill out and sign. <laughs> Boom! Boom! How about now? There we go. Now we can see it. Okay, okay. So this is, let's go back up to the top. So when I, this is the recipient view, right? And so I was the, I was the sender, but then we set that signing order. I was the first signer. We hit this yellow button. It brings us down to where we need to go. And again, you can draw, type, upload, or you can see what my signature looks like. Accept and sign. And, just, and now, and it's, on, so now know, it's on the e-course court. Just, it's, it's been sent to him. That's it. And just so you know, uh, yeah, but I just received that, that document myself. And just so you know, a client can sign a PandaDoc. They don't actually have to necessarily be, you know, 
in front of their laptop. So for example, they can be in Hawaii, they can open up their phone and they can actually do it through their mobile phone. They can do it through their tablets. So again, they don't need to necessarily be in front of a laptop or a computer to do it. Man, this was so much fun. Look at us sure. like just sticking the landing here at 9.44 a.m. Eastern, 2.44 uh, in your uh, Lisbon time. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. No, I think people are just uh, having some fun. Can someone drop the link to more information on integrations, any integration with Asana? This is perfect because in our script page winter, we actually were like, if we have an extra minute to fill, Igor, let's talk about integrations because that's always a question we're going to get. Yeah. So integration. So again, if you guys have, you know, CRMs, payment gateways, HR uh, tools, you know, you want to integrate with, with Panadoc, you can do it. Um, you know, pretty much on most plans, you're going to be able to to do that integration. You know, we even have an onboarding, you know, onboarding services. You know, these these basically onboarding services are, you know, you've got a dedicated specialist who's going to provide, you know, a unique and tailored professional uh, service to set you guys up for success. And these, you know, and our and our onboarding services, we can help you set up those integrations. You know. Anything you guys need, just let us know. You know, we'll be happy to do that. Again, you know, do reach out to again your customer success manager, account manager. You know, you have the help center as well. You've got loads and loads of really cool resources within our help center. Our teams worked really, really hard and it looked really cool. It's not, it's not like there's not a lot of information. It's just like easy to read information. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And Paige, it looks like we don't currently have an Asana integration. Of course, we can um have you suggest one in our uh, customer suggestion portal. I'm trying to remember what the name of that is and where the link is, but we do have a monday.com uh, CRM integration. And as you can see, tons of other native integrations as well built in. You can always uh, try to do uh, one with Zapier as well uh, to create automations. And let's say if uh, you want to have an automation where something moves in Asana to complete, uh, you know, to a complete, you know, uh, what's it called? Like, uh, maybe in progress to complete once someone signs it, that could be a really cool automation to set up via Zapier. But, um, yeah, that concludes our time. We are one minute over and I'm going to give people the rest of their, uh, their afternoons or mornings back. Igor, thank you so much for coming on here, man. Thank you so much uh, this for having was fun. Me. Was um, Final question came in in the last hair of a second from Elena. Is it possible to have multiple signers? Absolutely, you have multiple signers. Oh. Uh, can you reassign the signer? Yes, of course, that happens all the time. Yes. The person you thought you were going to have it signed to, you can then change it to a different signer. That's no problem at all. Um, someone else wrote, that was great. Good job, guys. That's what my ego needed. I needed to feel that boost of confidence. Um, Jose, appreciate you. Yes, guys. Igor. Don't get bit by any more sharks, but keep surfing. I hope your friends that joined in on this are proud of you and they tease you a little bit. And uh, this was awesome. Gabriella, Susanna, Paige, Jose, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have any other questions, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can find me, Travis Tyler, LinkedIn. You can find Igor Borges de, Al de Almeida. Did I get it right that time? Yeah, you did. You did. The Brock! Boom! All right, man. I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate you. We're going to end the stream. Adios, everyone.